let's pray as we start this video devotion. Dear God, thank you that we can take some time now just to think about you and to come together to share in some thoughts that will hopefully point us towards you, help us to take a moment of quiet and rest now um, so that we can start um, our day in a way that honours you. Amen. So recently, I expect you know that Jim Packer died and he wrote a very famous book called Knowing God. Uh, I remember my dad reading it when I was a little girl and there's some copies in the church library. And in that book, he says, once you become aware that the main business that you are here for is to know God, most of life's problems fall into place of their own accord. That reminds me a little bit of the hymn uh, where it talks about uh, trust and obey. And when we walk with the Lord and look at him, all the other problems in life uh, grow dim uh, because we are looking at God. Uh, there's some verses in uh, 2 Peter, uh, verses, um, 2 Peter 3 verses 17 and 18 and it says, Therefore dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. So I was wondering what it meant to know someone and a lot of you will know that I am extremely keen on tennis and I was thinking the other day what does it mean to know Andy Murray and I've watched lots and lots of his matches, loads of his matches and in fact I've watched the Wimbledon final on the 7th of July 2013 about 25 times and to some extent I could say uh, quite truthfully I know Andy Murray and when I'm watching him and um, I can see that he looks as if he's about to lose. I say, I know Andy Murray, he has got plenty more in the tank and this is when he's uh, the most dangerous. Uh, I know some of the plays that he will do. Um, I can see, uh, you know, uh, when he's in a match, uh, I know that there's certain shots that he loves to do. Uh, so, yeah, I do know Andy Murray. I I know uh, quite a lot about him as well, um, about the, the history, and uh, I know a bit about what his mum thinks. I've read her book, but do I really know him? I don't know him like his family know him. <sighs> I know about him, and I know enough of his character to know how he's going to react in certain situations. But it's not like I know Simon, for example. Now, with Simon, we know each other pretty well. Uh, we've been together for over 20 years. And when we play games, often, uh, if it's a game that depends on knowing the other person, like a game like Werewolf, we will often kill each other first. And that's because Simon finds it really, really hard to lie uh, to me. And I find it hard to deceive him because we know each other really well. And that's really knowing. We know just from the way each other talk and uh, from um, the way that we um, say things, look at each other. We know when uh, each other are telling the truth because I know his voice and uh, I know his characteristics. Well, th 
there's a story that Jesus uh, um, told, a parable, uh, and it's about the good shepherd and his sheep. So in John 10, uh, Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. And then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. So the question I went to ask today is, do we know about Jesus or do we know Jesus? Both are important. It is important to know about Jesus. It's important to know his teachings and to meditate on them but it's also important to have that personal relationship with Jesus to follow him just like those sheep followed the shepherd do we know Jesus's voice and do we believe those words when um, Jesus says I have come that they may have life and have it to the full there's a uh, some words here from Jim Elliot, who most of you will know and was martyred when he went to witness to the um, Orca Indians. And in his journals, he wrote these words about the joy of knowing God. I walked out to the hill just now. It is exalting, delicious. To stand embraced by the shadows of a friendly tree, with the wind tugging at your coattail and the heavens hailing your heart. To gaze and glory and to give oneself again to God. What more could a man ask? Oh, the fullness, the pleasure, the sheer excitement of knowing God on earth. I care not if I never raise my voice again for him, if only I may love him, please him. Perhaps in mercy, he shall give me a host of children that I may lead through the vast star fields to explore his delicacies, whose fingers' ends set them to burning. But if not, if only I may see him, smell his garments and smile into my lover's eyes, ah, then not stars nor children shall matter, only himself. Can we say that? Can we say that the joy of knowing Jesus eclipses everything else? And do we just not know about Jesus, but do we truly know Jesus? Do we know his voice and do we listen to him? Are we there ready when he is calling? Let's pray. 
Lord, help us to listen to you, to know you and to have that tremendous enjoyment in knowing you. Nothing else in life is as important as knowing you. Thank you that you also know us and I pray that today we will grow to know you just a little bit better. Amen.